Hello and uh, welcome to uh, welcome to our next lecture here. Today we're going to be talking about uh, instant runoff of voting. So uh, just to kind of recap where we're at, we've talked about two different voting methods so far. Uh, we've talked about plurality and we have talked about the Condor Say method. All right, so this will be our third uh, voting system called instant runoff voting, uh, also called IRV. Uh, in other places, it's called plurality with elimination. So maybe in other textbooks or other uh, other institutions that use this type of voting system, I call it plurality with el elimination. Uh, and you'll see why once we get into doing it. Now, the definition of how the instant runoff voting is uh, is uh, summarized here in this box for you, uh, but I think it's a lot easier to understand uh, just by seeing it done. Uh, also note, this is a very common form of, of a voting system that's used. Uh, it's used in several counties throughout the U.S. Um, and, and smaller state size elections tend to use this as well as uh, you'll get a lot of candidates running for the same position. And sometimes uh, before you have what's called the main election, you'll have a runoff uh, where you start eliminating some of the people that aren't getting a lot of votes in the beginning. Um, so let's take a look at what the system looks like. So here in example five, uh, we have a preference schedule in which a company's advertising team is voting on five different advertising slogans. Uh, for simplicity, we're just gonna call them A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so these are the five different slogans and they are voting on which one to go with. All right, uh, so if we were to run a plurality election here, all right, we would tally up the number of first place votes. So we've got slogan A, B, C, D, and E. And we would go through and we would count up the number of first place votes for each of the slogans. So for instance, A has zero. Right. B is going to have nine. Uh, C would have four. D would have six. And E would have one, which means B would win plurality. Okay. And if we were doing a plurality vote, it would end there and we would go with slogan B, but that's not how uh, plurality with elimination works. It's not how IRV works. All right. So essentially the election will continue, but what we're going to do before we continue the election is we are going to eliminate the slogan that got the fewest number of votes. This is why they call it an elimination. So recall on the first round when we initially calculated our plurality winner, A had zero votes. So A would get eliminated from the preference ballot. So we're going to take A, and we're just going to cross it off the preference ballot wherever we see it. And then we're going to pretend like A never existed. So we're going to move everything up, right? So the D and the E are going to move up. The D, B, and E will move up in this column, so forth and so on. So this column would be uh, B, C, D, E, right? The A is no longer there. And then this one would be C, D, B, E. This one would be uh, B, D, C, E. This one would be D, C, E, B. This one would be B, E, C, D. And this one would be E, D, B, C. And then we would run another plurality vote as if A were not there, All right? So we have B, C, D, and E, and we would retally. Okay. So B would have nine votes. C would have four votes. D would have six votes, and E would have one. All right, and then we would continue on the election, right? So whoever has the lowest number of first place votes gets eliminated next, right? So we, E is gonna be eliminated. Then we go through our preference ballot and we cross off all the E's. And then we move everybody up. Okay. So this column is going to be BCD now. This one will be CDB. This one will be BDC. This one will be DCB, and 
and BCD and DBC. Okay. And there we go. And then we would, uh, if the possibility uh, comes up, if you can condense columns, it's it's kind of handy to go ahead and condense any columns that are the same. Uh, so what you'll notice here is that the first and the fifth columns, right? So column one here and then two, three, four, five. So this one and this one are exactly the same now. They both have B, C, D. So we can condense those and make it a five. Okay, so in this example, that's how they, they do that. They condense and then everything else stays the same. There were no other columns uh, to condense there. So C, D, B, this one will be B, D, C, and this one will be D, C, B. And this last one will be uh, DBC. Okay. And then we retally. So we've got B, C, D. And we're going to count up those first place votes again. All right, so now B's got nine votes. C has uh, four votes. And D has seven votes. So C gets eliminated. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cross off all the C's. Get rid of those, pretend like they're not there anymore. And then we'll rewrite each of our columns, right? So this'll be BD, this'll be DB, this'll be BD, this'll be DB, and this'll be DB. And then we'll condense, right? So the BDs, right? So BD, BD, there's nine of those. And then the other 11 are gonna be DBs. And again, if I tally up my first place votes after I condense, we get nine first place votes for, for B and 11 for D. So D has now gained a majority. And at this point, D would be the IRV winner. So just a quick synopsis of how that worked. You start your election just like you would if you were running a plurality vote. And instead of looking at who has the most votes after that first round, you look at who has the fewest. Whoever has the fewest first place votes gets eliminated. You, you essentially wipe them from uh, the preference ballots and rerun the plurality vote again as if they did not exist. And then you see who has the least number of votes after round two. You do the same thing to them and you continue that process until uh, you get down to the last two standing. And at that point, you see who has the most first place votes. Um, and that one would be declared the winner in an IRV. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time with this try it now three, and we've seen this preference schedule before. This one's kind of tricky because you had some voters that uh, declined to offer a second or third choice. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. So I'm gonna start off my plurality just like I always do. So I'm gonna go uh, G, M, B, and we're gonna tally up some votes uh, for these guys. So let's see what we get here. So if I start adding up the votes for G, uh, they got those first three columns, and if you add those up, you should get 78. And then when we do uh, M, right, so we've got M getting these two, so that's going to be 92. And then B is going to get these two, that's 119. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, G is going to be eliminated first. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to cross off all the G's from my preference ballots. And I, instead of redrawing the entire preference ballot and moving everyone up and doing the condensing thing, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use what I have here with things crossed off. It is not necessary for you to redraw the ballot every time you eliminate somebody. If you can see who's in first place just by crossing them off, go ahead and do that. Save yourself a little bit of time. All right, little secret. I never <laughs> I never redraw the ballots, and I wouldn't expect you to either. It takes a lot of time. All right, so we're gonna go through. So if G is eliminated uh, in the second round, we're only gonna have M and B, okay? So I go through each of the columns here. M is gonna get these 44, 
they lose here, no votes here because M or B does not appear. So these 20 votes won't even get counted in the second round, okay? But M wins these two columns for sure because they were already at the top. So we got the 44, the 70, and the 22. And when we add those up, we'll get 136 first place votes for M. Okay, and then we go through and we look at how many columns uh, B would get. All right, so B's gonna get this 14 and the 80 and the 39. So that would give 133 votes if we add those up to B, which mean M wins I or B. Right. So that's two pretty good examples of the IRV method. Uh, we're going to stop there. I'm going to let you practice that IRV method with some of the with some of the practice problems on my open math. And then tomorrow we'll talk about what's wrong uh, with IRV, uh, what what or what can go wrong with it, so we understand its flaws. Um, and we're also going to be introduced to a new fairness criterion tomorrow um, that that actually kind of spawns out of the IRV situation. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day.